Welcome everyone to another video from the Gary Scrackle. It's so good to have you here with me today. Today we'll be doing memory. This is the storing and retrieving of information. Your entire identity and capacity to function depends on your ability to remember. Memory belongs to predominantly two distinct fields in psychology, cognitive psychology and clinical neuropsychology. There are three stages in the memory process. This is encoding, storage and retrieval. Encoding is the process by which information is received and laid down into storage. Usually information does not get encoded unless we direct attention to it. Therefore, if we do not make a conscious effort, the information may not be encoded at all. As a result, it cannot be stored or processed further. Then there is storage. Storage refers to the changes or variations in the nervous system that permit information to be maintained over time. These changes or variations are referred to as the laying down of memory traces. The memory they are stored may not be retrieved in a permanent or reliable form. Then there is retrieval. This is the process of recovering the information laid down in the memory trace. Although you have learned material and laid it down in the storage, usually something can go wrong with the process of finding it, the information, and recovering it in order to use it. Then there is the multi-store model of memory. This involves long-term memory, short-term memory, and sensory memory. Sensory memory stores an exact replica of the sensory stimulus for a fraction of a second. Short-term memory. Short-term memory is an aspect of the storage process of memory functioning, which is a part of the multi-store model of memory and proceeds sensory memory. As an individual pays attention to information, the long-term memory captures it for a restricted time and maintains it for approximately 20 seconds. If the information isn't actively attended to, it disappears. Therefore, in order to keep the memory, one has to deliberately affirm and reaffirm the information in order to walk the information down the neural network into the long-term memory storage. There are numerous inventive ways to engage with information so that it becomes concrete. Short-term memory holds the information actively and therefore everyday experience of normal consciousness requires an integral short-term memory. Only a partial amount of the large data of sensory stimulation that is encoded and stored in the sensory memory is transferred to one short-term memory. Selective attention acts as a filter and focuses specifically on only the significant aspects and in this way assists in normal functioning. Information held within short-term memory disappears rapidly if it is not rehearsed. We can however keep information by a process of maintenance rehearsal whereby constant repetition of material sustains the information. The unit of measurement of the information stored is called chunks. Short-term memory is able to maintain several chunks of information at a time. Incidences of interference assists the forgetting process. Interference is the displacing of old information in order to attend to new, relevant information. Long-term memory. A characteristic of long-term memory is that information can be stored virtually permanently. The amount of information capable of being stored within the long-term memory nears on unlimited. Added, the accuracy and precision with which information is stored is a fundamental feature of long-term memory and is organized so that retrieval is accessible with rapid efficiency. Therefore, the long-term memory stores information in a logical, determined sequence that assists an individual throughout their life. There are two independent aspects of which the storage cap capability of long-term memory is divided, 
and these are propositional and procedural memory and I'll put the def definition of both of these in the description box below. Propositional memory. Propositional memory is fact-based information and is divided into semantic and episodic components. Semantic memory is comprised of general knowledge about the world and assists one in mapping fact-based features within the, their mind as a mirror of reality. Episodic memory holds specific times, events and episodes within an individual's life. Procedural memory. Procedural memory is the memory of executing a specific task or skill. This aspect of memory is gained by manually performing a task and is difficult to unlearn, like riding a bike or driving a car. This learning is also resilient in the face of brain damage. Long-term memory assists an individual in reasoning about their surroundings via an organizational process called schematic framing or schemas and structured by both features of propositional memory. The theory of schemas was initially proposed by theorist British psychologist Frederick Barlett in the 1930s. He explained that individuals structured their understanding of reality by developing or building on existing schemas founded on facts. These initial foundations of reasoning are called pre-existing schemas. Memory is a process thereby of structuring and then restructuring, making the information ret retrieved possibly unreliable. Semantic network theory is a more refined investigation of Barlett's initial hypothesis. This states that meanings are categorized hierarchically and are determined by significance. It also illustrates that this makes memory more economically accessible. I put all of this in the description box below. Forgetting as retrieval failure. In spite of our vast acquiring and storage of memory, access remains problematic and flawed. Retrieval failure, the inability to recover information stored in long-term memory bank, is understood to be one of the most significant reasons of forgetting. According to psychologist Oliver Sacks, who, whilst documenting case studies of incidences of neurology, damage and treatment thereof, found that people contain a vast store of innumerable information and under the right conditions can recall the memory to the finest details, relaying all of the senses incorporated with the significant events. I just want to say Sachs and all the therapists and case studies I mentioned will be in the description box below. These findings correlate with brain surgeon Penfield who, through applying minute doses of electrical shock in the temporal region of the brain, discovered the brain's almost perfect ability to record things in accurate, precise detail. The problem then lay in retrieving this information. In short-term memory retrieval, failure arises due to either too much information stored or a process called interference. The energy required to focus on finding a specific memory within a unit of storage or chunk that has breached its capacity cannot be sustained. Therefore, an excessive amount of information makes retrieval increasingly difficult. Interference removes information by displacing material with other, fresher, more relevant material. This is especially true if the new information is similar to existing information. Whilst the more different the information represented, the less its ability to, to displace the stored memory. Theories that describe ways that assist in the retrieval of information stored. 
And again, the case studies and theorists mentioned in this video, you can find links in the description box below. So give them a check out. Usually when an individual remembers, they recover information via a process of association called queuing. According to Donald N. Thompson and N. Dahl Telving, who during the 1970s sought to better understand how one can enhance effectiveness of retrieval cues. Accordingly, the success of the cues is dependent on the specific format of the encoding of to be remembered words or TBR words at their time of storage. Their notion was that cues should match the type of information one wants to recover. TBR words on their own will not serve as effective cues unless encoded at specific times of information storage. Then, subsequent to this hypothesis, Alan Pavio added the notion that memory can be improved through association cues with mental imagery. According to him and his dual coding theory, we can improve our memory's ability to retrieve if we encode using both visual and verbal cues. The notion lies in providing structure to information and how it is represented over and above the significance each individual attributes to their memory. According to wikipedia.com, the support to this theory is in the fact that the brain processes verbal and visual information along distinct pathways in the mind. When attributing both word and image to a memory cue, the capacity to retrieve is doubly enhanced. Just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you like this, please let me know and subscribe. For everybody that supports me and has supported me so far, it's been a year since the Garage Grackle has been birthed and I just really thank you so much. You are invaluable to me. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the week. Goodbye.